Amen. Amen. John chapter 3, if you got a Bible, John chapter number 3. This morning in the scripture, John chapter number 3. We'll look at verse 1, very familiar verses that the Lord's put in our heart to say something about this morning. God being my helper, I trust you'll pray for me that God will use me to help you in the service today as we preach the word of God. May the Holy Ghost help us in the service. The Bible said in verse 1, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And marvel not that a son to thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whether it goeth, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall you believe I tell you of heavenly things. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up a serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, or eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. What great scripture here. Probably uh, some of the best in my heart. I know all scripture is inspiration of God, but these verses here are something that just really has an effect in my life uh, that God used to get me in the family of God. Uh, and of course, anybody gets saved going to hear the word of God to get in. Uh, amen. You don't get in by perhaps. Uh, you get in because there was a definite work in the God that brought you to salvation in Christ through the word of God. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful over 30 years ago that God Almighty used a man of God to tell me I had to be born again and the spirit of God took the truth and implanted in my heart and brought forth a birth that only God could produce. I can't explain it but I have experienced it and I know, you know the greatest witness of that, thank God the Holy Spirit lives within me. He's the only one that was there when it happened in me. Amen. I didn't have no man that tell me I got saved. Uh, uh, God changed my life so de uh, so radically, if I can use that word. Thank God from night to day uh, that God changed me. He done that work in me and changed me. Uh, An amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved uh, a wretch like me. Uh, that this God that does it. Uh, now in this scripture here, Nicodemus uh, is a man of the Pharisees. He's religious. He's one of the top, uh, uh, my friend, Pharisees. Uh, was in a, a, a Sanhedrin court and council of men uh, uh, that were about 70 uh, and Nicodemus uh, no doubt was in the, around Jesus uh, and seen Jesus uh, uh, do miracles uh, and when you see the hand of God move then you get to thinking uh, you get to wondering if the religion's all we got uh, then I wouldn't want what we've got amen uh, but I don't have religion I told him that my grandpa when I got saved he said before he got saved. He'd go around and tell people that Joey's got religion. Amen. We'd go down to the family reunion and he'd say, well, he don't say that around him. He's got religion. But I found out I got more than religion. Amen. That's right. I don't have religion. Thank God I've got salvation. Amen. Tell you, you got, a lot of people's got religion. Amen. But religion's that produced a man. But thank God salvation is from from above. Huh? That's something God has to do. You can't do it. Huh? Amen. And I tell you, A.W. Pete said uh, uh, that uh, Jesus uh, uh, told Nicodemus something he couldn't do. Huh? Amen. That's, uh, that's Bible. Huh? Thank God for, for our instruction. Huh? Uh, but you can't live.
of the Bible unless he's living in you. You can't do what God says unless the doer's on the inside and you ought to get a hold of that. Amen. I, listen, friend. I, didn't, I don't have to live one day, thank God, in trying to live for God. That's just in me. Amen. The consciousness of God and the presence of God is in me. I'm not living by a rule. I'm living by the lead of God. And many are led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. Amen. I didn't wake up this morning and say, well, the day's Sunday. Thank God I woke up and said, it's be able to get to go to the house of God because it's the Lord's day. Amen. In fact, friend, the, the, thank God the day Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and all them, their name after idolatrous gods anyway. God never said this is Sunday. He says the first day of the week. Amen. I'm not being particular about that. I'm just saying, thank God I'm not worshiping a day. I'm worshiping Christ. Amen. Nicodemus had seen miracles from the Lord. I said this and I'll say it again. I believe he was probably there that day that man got lowered down in that house when they opened up the roof because it said lawyers and doctors of the law were present. The Pharisees were. And the Bible said the power of God was there to heal them. But there wasn't but one man healed according to the scripture. And that's the man they let down. Get that. The man they let down to the roof. Amen. And walked away on his bed. He was the only one that was healed uh, uh, that the Bible records. Uh, and you got to think the whole house is full uh, on that day when he woke out. Uh, I kindly believe Nicodemus uh, and God was there. Uh, amen. Maybe another uh, miracle. Uh, uh, no doubt Jesus did uh, uh, that he seen. Uh, and the Bible said he came to Jesus by night. Uh, he didn't come in the daytime. Uh, he come at the night. Uh, amen. I tell you like what Jesus said to him. He said, we know you're a teacher come from God, Nicodemus said. He said, no man can do the miracles you're doing. He said, God be with him. I'd like to tell Nicodemus, you got that right. He is God though. He's not just with him. He is God. He's the God man. And there's nothing he can't do. Amen. Hey, look at your case and look at what God's done for you. It's amazing how God saved you and made you a new creature and give you a hope. Thank God it lasts until he comes and it lasts forever. Amen. I tell you, friend, what a great God, what a miracle working God that we serve this morning. Had it not been God, we wouldn't be here. Amen. Nicodemus came by night. Jesus said this is the first thing I dislike is straightforwardness. He didn't try to discuss the miracles. He just said, verily, verily, I say unto except a man be born again, he can't see the kingdom of God. I mean, here's a man that's, that's really a high top prioritized man in the religious world. And the first thing Jesus says to him, except you be born again, you can't understand or see the kingdom of God. Hey man, I'm gonna tell you this this morning, buddy. Unless the Holy Spirit of God bursts man in the family of God, he can't see what I'm preaching about. He can't see it. He don't understand it. There's never been a time. And listen, can I say this first of all? That this is the starting point. There's an old boy one time playing baseball. I can't remember his name, but he hit a home run. And he went around the bases and he missed first base. And he tagged the other bases and touched home. And the, and the pitcher called an appeal, stepped off, he told the umpire he's appealing, the man missed first base and he threw the ball to the first base, they touched the base, he said he's out. And I'm gonna tell you this, you can touch the other bases, we don't touch this base, Amen. you never will make it. <laughs> You'll never get home unless you get to the starting point. <laughs> There's always a starting point in everything. Amen. A starting point in life is at birth. 
It's a physical birth. Thank God when you started in this life. Amen. Yeah. Boy, you ever thought about that? That's the miracle of God that you had, that you even had life. Yeah. Isn't it amazing how God can put a daddy and a mama together and, and, and that seed of that daddy falls in the womb of the mother and there's conception made by the goodness of God and there's a little old baby formed with inside of that mother and nine months later, here it comes out. Thank God, a, a, a child. Hey, man, that's amazing to me the more I think about it. That's why the psalmist said we're fearfully and wonderfully made. It's amazing. I, I tell you, think about five fingers on every hand. I mean, that's just amazing. Thank God, think about the feet you have and, and the eyes you have and the ears you have and the nose you have and the mouth you have and the heart, thank God, that's a seat of life and everything about you. It's just amazing. It can't be nothing but God how to bring a child into the world. That's where the starting point is. Amen, buddy. I'm telling you, thank God. My friend, you got to have a starting point. And God put us here in this time. Thank God. And when them little boys is born and girls, that's a miracle of God. Amen. That's right, buddy. It's amazing. But there's a starting point in spiritual life. Now, I won't tell you this. You just don't walk into it. You just don't wake up one day and say, I'm going to walk into spiritual life. No baby walked into natural life. There's people in the church that just decided to start coming to church. There's people in the church that just decided because my daddy or mama or my brother or sister got saved, I'm just going to start going to church. Well, that's all right, but that's not life. Life has to start at a birth. There's got to be a starting point when a man, thank God, is in spiritual life. Listen, I got born in the physical life through the womb of my mama, thank God, November 25th, 1959, and that's as far as I can go back. I can't go back no further than that. And man, you can't go back no further than the day you was born. Now, God can because he's eternal. But you can only go back unto a physical life until the day you got born. Yeah. Right. I want to ask you this. Let's just go ahead and straight forward with it. When did your spiritual life start? Yeah. Huh? When did your spiritual life start? There's a day that you was born physically yeah. and there's a day you was born again spiritually. Right. Yeah. That's why Jesus said that which is born of flesh is flesh. He said, he said, except the man be born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That word water there, if you look at the truth of it, it's talking about a fleshly birth. Yeah, it is. Yeah. The verse six explains that because he, that which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. Uh, he said, you're born naturally, but you got to be born again spiritually. Amen. 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 You got to be born within uh, of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and that's by the power of God. Uh, ain't God, God done that. That's amazing how God does that. That. I, tell you, I can't explain it. I can't produce it. But I know God does it. Amen. You wouldn't be here if God hadn't done it. There wouldn't be nobody coming to hear me preach. Amen. I mean, there might be some, but they wouldn't come every week. Thank God to hear me get up preach like this unless they had a supernatural change within their heart that they've been born again. And God lives in the heart. And the Holy Ghost bears witness with it. Amen. Amen. How can these things be said? The old fellow worked with me up there at Bendix when I worked there and I got saved. His name was Larry Thomas. Him and Bill Cress was back in the testing room. And I went back there one day and I just started talking about being I mean, saved. And I got to talking about how God saved me and they asked me questions, you know, I'd answer the best I could. And I got down to talking about being born again. And old Bill, Bill and Larry were standing over there and Larry turned around and he said, I can't see a thing you saying. <laughs> and I said, you got to have God to see it. And I said, I'm going to tell you this, a blind man can't tell me what color these pews are. 
I can tell him what color they are, but he can't see it. Amen, brother. And I'm going to tell you one thing. I can preach all day, but to God yeah, opens your eyes right for you. and lets yeah, you my... see what I'm preaching and fall in your heart and give you the understanding of being born Ooh. again, you never will be born again. It's amazing. I mean, it's amazing. Thank God that these is here this morning. That's got a testimony. Thank God they can stand right now and say there was a day that God had a starting point and God burnt me in the family and made me a new creature. I'm telling you, if you don't have that, you don't have salvation. Amen. Amen. That's right. Yeah. You don't have it. Right. There's a starting point. I want to say this. It's the Spirit's power. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Number one thing about it, it's got to be conviction. Holy Spirit come to convict. Convict. Right. The word conviction means he come to convince you or to reprove you. Convince means to let you be made, let, let it be made known to you. That's what the Holy Ghost come for. He come to speak to men about their about being lost and sinners. And if he don't do that, you never will get saved. You see, the thing of it is conviction, thank God, is a work of God. I can't convict you. Only God can convict you. Only God can come to where you're at and deal with your heart. I know, brother, he don't have to be in church to do it, but it's a good place to do it. Amen. I'm done telling you one thing. Uh, the Holy Ghost has to bring conviction. Uh, he has to convict you. Uh, he's got to reprove you. Uh, he's got to show that you're guilty. Uh, and God, you've sinned. Uh, you need God. Uh, amen. The Holy Spirit come to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. And when he does, you'll know it. Uh, you don't have to guess about it. When he convicted me, uh, I could not shake it. I couldn't. I'm just preaching my testimony. I can't tell you yours, but I'm telling you when the Holy Ghost got on me, I couldn't shake it. Amen. If you can get convicted and go home and watch TV and shake it, you probably didn't get much deep conviction. I'll be honest with you, I couldn't eat. It took the appetite away from me. It made me feel like I had 10,000 pounds on me. Amen. I mean, I felt like it did. I felt like within me I had 10,000 pounds yeah. on me. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Yeah. You know what the church needs again? They need power in it that they can break convict sinners. They can let men know that they're lost. Yes. If they don't see they're lost, they'll never want God. Yeah. <laughs> Conviction has to come. It's got to come. Amen. Yeah. I won't say this, not only does the Holy Ghost convict, but notice this here, he not only convicts a man, but he, he chooses, he chooses to pull on your heart. Verse eight said, the wind bloweth where it listeth. If you look up the word listeth, it simply means the wind blows where it chooses, where it prefers. If the wind don't blow, the Holy Ghost don't move, you won't get under conviction. God's got to do it. Yeah. It's amazing. Isn't it amazing when you read this Bible? Woman issue of blood, 12 years. Jairus' daughter, 12 years old. Man, at the, at, at the bait, gate, beautiful, he's over 40 years old. Mm -hmm. Man, there by the pool of Bethesda. Laid there for 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. You ever ask this question? Wonder why God didn't do it sooner. I'll tell you why. Wind didn't prefer. Yeah. He come by at the right time. Yeah. Lazarus in the grave four days. Oh yeah. Right. There's always a time period. Yeah. A working of God. There's a time period to bring a man forth to the to the birth. Sister Linda testified the other Sunday. Yeah. She got saved in nineteen ninety four. I believe that's what she said. You, December nineteen ninety four. Why did she play the piano and, and, and actually do all the work about here at the church as a, as a lady at the church from about 70s to, to the 90s? You're talking about about 20 years of being here and never got under conviction. Until one day the Holy Ghost dealt with her heart and brought her to Calvary. 
You know why? The wind blow where it listeth. Yeah. The wind blow where it listeth. You can't, you can't force the production of God. God sets everything up to work in your heart. You started dating her. God worked in your heart when you went to church. You went to Oliver B. Gray's tent meeting. God started working. He worked in your heart that night. You come to a funeral. God worked in your heart that night. You was in by the church. God worked in your heart when you got here. It's all the work of God. That's all I can say. And the wind blows where it listed. Hey, this is my prayer. Blow, wind, blow. I don't know who God might blow on, but I do know this. He knows where to blow and he knows how to deal with people. And when he does, thank God, an apple will fall off the tree. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Right. Why did God let Saul persecute the church? And then here, here's the most, probably the, he says the chief of sinners. Yeah. A man's going to Damascus with letters in his hand to, uh, to persecute the church. Yeah. And all of a sudden here, the light of God shines out of heaven, knocks him to the ground. Yeah. Thank God and say, here's a voice out of heaven. And he says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And all of a sudden he's saying, who art thou, Lord? Yeah. 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 Amazing. Then he said, I don't, then I'm going to let you pin down the epistles to the New Testament church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the wind, brother. It's God. Get what I'm about to tell you. God's will will be done. Yes, will. And he's going to do it through you. Yeah. Right. And he'll do it in his time through you. Amen. Why John the Baptist, why John the Baptist get, uh, uh, beheaded after three years of ministry? Because it was his time. Yeah. Right. That's right. You hear what I'm about to tell you? I need God. Amen. He don't have to have me. He don't have to have me. Do you know God could raise a man up for one message? And say, that's what I want him for. Yeah. And, and never preach again. That's right. That's right. He could, couldn't he? If he wanted to. What do you know about Jonah after he preached to Nineveh? What excites me about what I'm preaching right now is it's the wind that blows. It's God. He's got to do his will. Yeah. Hey man, 1989, God put me in this church. Hey man, and God said, I want you to preach. I just said, Lord, I'll do what you tell me to do. Thank God I'll preach. Hey man, and now here he is. Thank God over 27 years later, and I'm at the same place. But I'll tell you, God's will be done, and I'm open to it. Whatever God does with me, I'm pleased with. And you know why? Because the wind blows. Yeah. Here's a man, Nicodemus. He's as lost as lost can be. He don't have an idea about spiritual things. He only knows the rules of the law. That's all he knows. He knows religion. Don't know nothing about spiritual things. And Jesus said, you must be born again. And he tried to tell him, thank God he did tell him. In verse 8, it's the wind. It's, it's the wind's choice. And then he said in the latter part of that verse, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Yeah. That means, thank God, that there's a change in everyone that's born again. Yeah. Now, I hadn't changed on the outward man that much. But I'll tell you what, it will change the inside and it'll change manifestations on the outside. It'll change it. Yeah. Amen. Amen, brother. I'm telling you what, we got some little old babies in here. And you know what? They're all babies. That's babies. But they all don't look the same. That's right. But I'll tell you one thing. They don't change them what they are. Right. Now, I'm going to tell you this. When you get saved, you'll change on the inside. Sure you, know what the, you know what the first, first thing I got when I got saved? I got peace with God. 
I got peace that I knew that Christ had saved me and gave me eternal life. Yeah. And I didn't understand all, but I'm telling you one thing. There was a peace that got in my heart and peace filled my soul. And I'm telling you what, you talking about the peace that came joy. I was glad, thank God. I'm telling you, how can you not be? Amen. Right. How can you not be happy if you've been saved? Amen. Right. I'm telling you what does it. The Spirit of God does it. He manifests Himself through His people. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit works in a congregation of people yeah. that lives for God and manifests uh, yeah. uh, the spiritual walk of God and the spiritual life of God that's manifested through them. Amen. Listen, friend, I'm not a robot. Amen. I'm, not, I'm not a puppet. I'm a man that's been saved under the lead of the Holy Ghost. And that don't mean I follow Him all the time. Well, sometimes I don't. But I'll tell you one thing I know when I'm not doing it. And God deals with me when I'm not doing it. And I'm telling you, if you got saved, you got changed. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Amen. He'll change you inside out. Yeah. Yes, he will. I've read testimonies of great men how they got saved. And I found out they all got saved the same way. Yeah. Through the Spirit of God. Right. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. Amen. <laughs> Billy Sunday walked into a mission one day and yes, he heard a man preach a gospel message. Played professional baseball for the yep. Chicago White Sox. Yep. He's one of, one of the, he was a, he, uh, he was, he was a drunkard. Yep. He lived a rough life, but he's a baseball player and a good one at that. Thank God he went in, heard a gospel message and he got saved. Yeah. And resigned everything else and said, I'm in the ministry now. I'll do whatever God wants. As far as we know and what we've read, Mr. William Ashley Sunday, which many children was named after. And many people's name, many children named after preachers in the time gone by. Yeah. William A. Sunday was a gospel preacher. Yeah. And we always remember the old saying, they walked the sawdust trail because he preached them meetings and they had sawdust and many, they said many a people got saved under the ministry of that man of God. Why? Because the wind blowed one day. Right. Because he heard the gospel. Hey, God, it wasn't that he felt something. It's that he heard it. He, thank God, heard the sound of it. I tell you, you don't know about the winds. You can't see it. But thank God you can see the results of it. Amen. 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 Did y'all see the wind blowing the other day? You didn't see it but you saw the results. Yep. So what we say is, boy, did you see the wind blowing? Did you see the wind blowing? Hey, you don't see the wind, you just see the results of the wind. You say, show it to me. I can't show it to you, I just thank God no it does. Amen. It can blow on one tree and not on another. I'll tell you one thing, when the wind blows, yep. you can't stop the wind. I won't say something this morning. This is probably going to be a disagreeable comment, but I'm saying it anyway because I think it needs to be said. When God decides to do something, there's not a man living can stop him. Not a man. I can't send nobody to hell. I can't. Somebody said you'll send them to hell. No, I won't. The Bible says he that believes not is condemned already. Yeah. Why does man go to hell? Because he rejects Christ right. and because he believes not. Yeah. Amen. Now I'm going to tell you this. I am responsible to give the gospel. Yeah. And I'll be accountable for what I did and what I knew. Right. Right. Yeah. Everybody in the church is accountable for what they do and what they know. Yeah, you better believe it. But give me, give me, give me a minute. And listen to this. God was going to send Jonah down there, buddy. It didn't matter what ship he got on. It didn't matter what way he went. Yeah, he put the he put the storm on the boat. Yeah, he did. And he zeroed right in on the preacher. Yeah, yeah. And when he was down there sleeping, God says, "I'll wake him." 
And he rocked the boat and blew the wind and shook the ship. And Jonah woke up. Thank God they woke him up. I don't even know he woke up. They went and woke him up. And they said, well, they, their lives were at jeopardy, them mariners. And, they, and Jonah, thank God, come out and confessed that he was a Hebrew and that he served God. Amen. And the only hope they had is to throw him overboard. Yeah. When they threw him overboard, he got put in the whale's belly. Three days and three nights. See, I believe the Bible. Somebody said, do you believe that happened on purpose? 100%. Take this. Will you take this? God did that so he could say, there ain't but one sign that I can give you. Y'all look for a sign, but I'll give you one. As Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Yeah. <laughs> what you worried about? Yeah. What you worried about? Who, who can resist his will? If he's got something for you to do, he's got to put it on you to do it. Yeah. Sure is. You ain't going to get out of that. Right. Amen. That's right, buddy. If he, if he wants you, amen. Some of you come up and say, I believe God wants me to go. I ain't got somewhere to preach the gospel. And here you say, I'm 70 some years old. It don't matter. No, it don't. Right. I'm tired of the world laughing and, and saying, oh, that can't be done. I'm Daniel what? You don't know who you're talking about. Right. I'm talking about God. Huh? Yeah. Amen. Huh? Nicodemus couldn't understand it. Huh? And he said, how can these things be? Huh? But it was of the power of God. The wind had to blow on them and bring them in. Amen. Yeah. Thank God. Right. God. Well, I just... I just thought I'd get in one day you did. That's what Naaman said. I thought. When they went down there, Naaman was full of leprosy. I mean, his whole body's full of leprosy. Disease with them leprous sores. And yeah. Elisha goes down. I mean, Naaman goes down to Elisha's house. and Elisha said, go out there and tell him to go dip in Jordan seven times. Elisha didn't even go out. He sent his servants. That's good. My master said, dip in Georgia seven times. You'll come out clean. And this is what he said. I thought. I thought he'd come out and just wave his hand over the house and I'd be healed. And what's wrong with them other rivers besides Jordan? I'm going to tell you one thing. You better what? You got to do what God says. Yeah. If you want to be saved, you'll have to obey exactly what He says. And if you don't do it, you'll die lost. Yeah. Right. Right. Some of you's got pride about up to here. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't say up to here, but right up to here, that's where you're yeah. prideful. Amen. Naaman had to do it. And he finally went over to Jordan. Them boys said, well, if he had told you to do some hard thing, you'd have done it. Yeah. I wonder how many people, if I got up this morning, I said, and it was in the Bible. I said, God said you had to get on your hands and knees and crawl around this church 15 times. You can go to heaven. Why well, everybody be on their knees. But I said, God said it's a free gift to God. You come as you are and Jesus will save you. Nobody will move. Yeah. That's right. Why? Because the wind's got to blow their way. They ain't going to move unless God moves on them. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you what he done. Listen to me. He imparted faith. You didn't have none. He imparted faith. He come to you and imparted faith to you. He put faith in you to believe what he said or you never would have believed. I won't say this and I'm through. It's a starting point. It's the Spirit's power and it's the Savior's pardon. What does the cross mean to you? This is what Jesus said. He said, as the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. This is what he said to Nicodemus. There's a remedy for your sin. What is it? The pole? And what's on the pole and who's on the pole. 
And he said in the wilderness when all them Israelites rebelled against Moses and they was getting built by fiery serpents and was dying and Moses played with God and he said, Moses, make a brazen serpent and put it on a pole and he said, lift the pole up and all them that's been built, they can look upon the serpent and when they look, they can be healed. simple. It's a look of faith. Listen, I'm not taking away from what we call old time doctrine. But son, all you had to do was look when you knew you was lost. Amen. Boy, I'm about to run. <laughs> God help us. Amen. You ever read Charles Spurgeon's testimony? And it was snowing that morning. He was wanting to get his lost. He said, I've been to all kinds of preachers and I can't never find the truth. And it's lost. He's lost. He's 16 years old. He's walking through snow, probably about 12 inches high. He's trying to find a place to worship and he finds a, a primitive Methodist church. I have never heard of such. I've heard of a lot of Methodists, but I ain't never heard of no primitive Methodists. He goes in, the preacher don't make it that morning. He gets a layman up and he reads Isaiah 45, 22. And he says, uh, the verse says, look unto me all ye the ends of the earth and be ye safe for I'm God and there's none else. And he looked in the gallery and he said, young man, that's most miserable young man, that's lost young man, look to the bleeding Savior, young man, look to the dying lamb, young man, look to Christ, look to him, don't look to the Father, don't look to the Spirit, don't look to the church, don't look to me, but look to Jesus. Yeah. And Spurgeon said when he said that, I looked and I saw the bleeding lamb and all of a sudden it started cleansing me. And I've saved. Mm. Hey, Thank God, man. buddy. Just look. Don't look to me. Look to Jesus. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. The remedy. Thank God's on the cross. The requirement. You must be born again. Yeah. That's the requirement. God requires you to be born again. That's the requirement. And the redemption is in the blood that he shed on the cross. That's all Jesus. Yes, it is. It's all him. Nicodemus, you must be born again. Now, I got this this morning. I got this this morning. This is what Jesus said to him. Art thou a master of Israel? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Art thou a master of Israel? Art thou not a teacher? Art not thou the doctor? Uh, that's what that word means. Yeah. Art not thou a teacher, a doctor of Israel? And knowest not these things. I like what old Vance Habner said. He said, he said, God must have loved the common people because he sure made a lot of them. <laughs> made a lot of us. This man here just wasn't a common man when it come down to religion. But he said, you're a master and you don't know what I'm preaching to you. Mm. I preached this morning on the new birth. You got to have it. Amen. You got to be born again. Yeah, right. Have you been born again? Amen. I've heard a lot of testifying. But I'm going to tell you the greatest testimony you could ever testify about is when you got born again. Amen. Right. 
That's what you need to tell. Hey, you must be born again. I asked Mr. Whitfield one time, great preacher, said he preached on must be born again at least 3,000 times. They said, Mr. Whitfield, why do you preach so much about being born again? He said, because men must be born again. Let's stand this morning.